Hello friends, this video on evolution part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us look at the examples. So example 1, it says that within a population of butterflies, the color brown, which is denoted by capital B, is dominant over the color white, which is small b. And 40% of the butterflies are white. So that means it is telling these butterflies are white and white butterflies will be denoted by which genotype? Small b, small b. So homozygous recessive value is being given to you. Calculate the following. The percentage of butterflies in the population that are heterozygous and the frequency of the homozygous dominant individual. As I had mentioned before, if you know homozygous recessive value, you can calculate both heterozygous as well as homozygous dominant. So we will make use of it. Now in this question, what is given the value? Now what do we know from Hardy-Weinberg principle? First let us write, write that. So from Hardy-Weinberg principle, we know two things. So the first thing is that the alleles, the frequency of alleles is going to be constant over generations. That is P plus Q is equal to 1. That is one thing we know. The other thing which we know is P square plus 2 PQ plus Q square is equal to 1. Here this will tell you the frequency of heterozygous and this will tell you the frequency of homozygous dominant. Right, And this is going to tell you the frequency of homozygous recessive. So this is all that we know from Hardy-Weinberg principle. Now in this question, 40% of the butterflies are white. What does that mean? This means the frequency of the homozygous recessive is 40%. That means it actually gave you the value of this. So as per the question, Q square is equal to 40%. And what is 40%? It is 0.4. So from this you can calculate the value of Q which is going to be square root of 0.4 and that is equal to 0.63 approximately. Right? So now you got the value of Q. Now with Q you can find out the value of P. Therefore, P will be equal to 1 minus Q. So that is 1 minus 0 0.63 which is going to be 0 0.37. So now you know Q and you also know P. Therefore, you can calculate the frequency of homozygous dominant. Now, first part asks about the heterozygous. So you have to calculate the percentage of heterozygous. So heterozygous frequency is given by 2 PQ. So 2 PQ is equal to 2 into P is 0 0.37 and Q is 0 0.63. So this is equal to 0 0.47. So if you want to write it in terms of percentage, this is going to be equivalent to 47%. So this is the percentage of the population that are heterozygous. The second part of the question asks the frequency of homozygous dominant individuals. So for homozygous dominant, homozygous dominant will be given by P square and P is 0 0.37. So 0 0.37 into 0 0.37 that is equal to 0 0.14. So this is going to be the frequency of homozygous dominant individuals. Right? So this is how we can actually uh, calculate what would be the percentage of heterozygous, what would be the percentage of homozygous dominant if we know the percentage of homozygous recessive. So let us look at another example. There are 100 students in a class, 96 did well in the course whereas 4 blew it totally and received a grade of F. In the highly unlikely event that these traits are genetic rather than environmental, if these traits involve dominant and recessive alleles and if the four represent, represent the frequency of the homozygous the recessive condition, please calculate the following. So again the homozygous recessive condition is being given and homozygous recessive is denoted by which 
value of the uh, equation of hardy weinberg principle so homozygous recessive is given by q square so as per the question q square is given as 4% which is equal to 0.04 that is q square so what we need to calculate in a we have to calculate the frequency of the recessive allele so frequency of recessive allele is denoted by q so q will be equal to under root of q square that is under root of 0.04 which is equal to 0.2 so this would be the frequency of recessive allele frequency of the dominant allele that is p so p plus q is always equal to 1 so p will be 1 minus q that is 1 minus 0.2 which is equal to 0.8 and in the third part we have to calculate the frequency of heterozygous individual and that is given by 2 pq so this will be 2 pq that is 2 into p is 0.8 into q is 0.2 so this will be equal to 0 0.32 so this is how we can calculate the various frequencies of different alleles. So I hope that by now you understood the concept of Hardy-Weinberg principle. Let us look at this example to see how the frequency of genes can change over a period of time. So we will use the same example of beetles for better understanding. So let us suppose in this locality you have only the red beetles. So these red beetles they reproduce amongst themselves and the population of red beetles increase. Now due to mutation a single green beetle is formed but this green beetle gives a survival advantage in the way that it is not being caught by the predators and as a result what happens the green beetles are always safe from the predators but the predators keep on eating the red beetles as a result the population of the red beetles keep on decreasing and at the same time not due to natural selection Due to the survival advantage of the green beetles, the population of green beetles keep increasing. Now over a period of time, it is seen that the red beetles are completely gone and they are all replaced by the green beetles. So from this we see that the green beetles evolved from the red beetles. So the frequency of alleles changed. So that if the red beetles was denoted by some allele, for example, say a so that a has reduced so the frequency of a has reduced but at the same time the frequency of b has increased that is the allele which represents the green beetle so that has increased so the total of the sum of the alleles the total frequency of the alleles will remain constant now let us suppose over a period of time suddenly a blue beetle has appeared and this blue beetle is formed as a result of variation which is again due to mutation so let us suppose this blue beetle is like something which doesn't which is very rare and suddenly it has come up due to some mutation now in this case the blue color doesn't have any survival advantage as such but since this blue beetle exists there so one or two blue beetles have formed as a result of reproduction because sometimes there are chances that if this beetle is blue maybe when this undergoes reproduction with some other beetle there are chances that a blue beetle might be formed so even though their population did not increase much but yeah some two three blue beetles were there now let us suppose due to some accident for example a huge animal like elephant or lion or something like that suddenly steps in on this portion of the area now when they step in what happens all the green beetles get killed so this is just this happens just by chance so it it is not that the elephant intentionally killed all the green beetles it just stepped in somewhere and just in that area all the green beetles were there so what happened all the green beetles are killed at once so their population drastically reduced now what are we left with we are just left with a few blue beetles but over a period of time these blue beetles will then undergo reproduction amongst themselves and the population of blue beetle will increase so what happened here this accidental uh, survival of the blue ones was an example of genetic drift and the survival of the green ones was an example of natural selection now but if you look from the beginning till the end what happened what happened was that initially the frequency of the red beetle was more 
then the frequency of the green beetle was more and then again a time came when the frequency of the blue beetle was more. So we can say that the frequency of an inherited trait or the frequency of a certain gene can change over generation but the total frequencies of the alleles will always remain constant. So even though the red beetle is being replaced by the green beetle that is fine but in each generation the total frequencies that is the sum of the frequencies of all the alleles will always be equal to 1. So this was what was told by the Hardy-Weinberg principle and whenever you see that the Hardy-Weinberg principle is being deviated, it is not being followed, that means evolution is taking place. So in this case if you see when you try to compare these generations together, for example, if you just consider the generation where, where only red beetles were there, so in that case your Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium might hold true. But when the reds are being replaced by the green ones, your Hardy-Weinberg principle equilibrium will not hold true because now you actually have some green beetles and some red beetles and your equilibrium is spoiled. So that means evolution is taking place. So whenever there is a deviation from Hardy-Weinberg principle, whenever you see that p square plus 2pq plus q square is equal to 1 is not being satisfied, that means evolution is taking place. Now some of the factors which affect Hardy-Weinberg principle are going to be almost the same factors which cause evolution. So the disturbance in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium indicates evolutionary change, gene migration, so organisms moving in bunch from one place to another that causes a change in the equilibrium both at the place from where they are moving and also at the place where they are getting into. Genetic drift as we saw in the previous example that when genetic drift is there, the green beetle got replaced with blue beetles. So now when this happens, what happens that entire equilibrium is spoiled because the genes which were responsible for the green color, they drastically decrease. Mutations, so because whenever mutations happen, some change happens and therefore evolution happens. Genetic recombination. So all these factors are basically the factors which cause evolution and these are the factors which disturb the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium as well. So I hope now you got to understand why we discussed about Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium here. Last but not the least natural selection again because natural selection is one of the primary factors which cause equilibrium, which cause evolution. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons ask questions, refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.